Hey guys, this is Julie from The New Lighter Life again, and today I have a pretty cool update. If you've been following along, I've been showing you guys how to create a cookbook in Microsoft Word, and I've done quite a few posts and some videos on this. Um, if you want to go to thenewlighterlife.com, I have quite a bit of content up dealing with cookbook covers, uh, table of contents, binding, um, printing your cookbook from home, some other topics as well, but I was asked how to create an index for the cookbook. I didn't really know where to start with it. And so based on that question, which I so appreciate, um, I did start doing some research and played around with my personal cookbook a ton, trying to find the best and easiest way to make an index. Now, of course, you know, an index is something found at the end of the cookbook and maybe by key ingredient or cooking method. Another thing you can do is by holidays. So you just have a lot of options with indexing your recipes and it can really get away from you. After so much trial and error and working in my cookbook, which has well over 200 recipes, I have finally come up with the most efficient way I could to create an index and so I'm gonna share that with you. I'm not gonna take you into my actual cookbook, just gonna share with you an example with my own recipes today. Over here on the left, that's my entire cookbook and this is the index that I have created. If you are thinking about creating an index, just know it takes a lot of time. It's actually not complicated at all. We've already gone through creating a table of contents. It's more complicated than that, but it's really not that difficult, but it is very, very time consuming. When I started working on my index in my cookbook, I didn't really have a plan. So I just want to tell you, you should probably have a plan, learn from my mistake. I went and created an index category master list. Now I'm going to share this with you guys on my website, but this is very personalized and there's things on here that maybe you never eat or it wouldn't be applicable, but this is, I guess, a brainstorming document and I use this master list extensively once I started really getting down the method of creating an index. Now the reason I'm going to really hit on this master list is, like just say here for instance cookies, if I anywhere as I'm marking recipe titles, if anywhere I put in the field cookie, it's going to create a whole new index portion here. So you're going to have a section with cookie and a section with cookies. And so you start to have all these duplicates and you really have to be careful to just stick with exactly how you said you're going to format it. You can do edits, but it is very time consuming. Work off of this, come up with your own method of categorizing your index and stick with it. Now, before we get into actually marking our entries for the index, I want to explain to you how this works. So almond bark is a main entry and then each one of the recipe titles is a sub entry. But you'll see below where the bars are, there's frosted, unfrosted, and those are also, the frosted and unfrosted are actually in the main entry. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. Going to this document with my pulled recipes, the very first thing you need to do is highlight the recipe title. I'm in the references tab, and I'm gonna say mark entry. Word defaults whatever is highlighted into the main entry box, but I don't want it to categorize that recipe as being a main category. I want it to fall under, in this case, I want it to fall under bread quick. So what you wanna do is you'll wanna control X, which is gonna be to cut it. You can also right click and do that. You'll click in the sub entry, control V, which is putting the recipe title down there. And up on the top, in order to get the main index entry, you simply type however you want it to look. So I'm gonna type bread. And now to get my sub category, colon, and there's no spaces between this, my sub entry is gonna be quick. So now you just simply go mark, and I'm gonna close this for now. It puts this squiggly bracket, tells me what it's gonna be bread quick. Grandma's pumpkin bread is the title. So notice the shifts. If you wanna, see this without any markup because this portion here is not going to print. So if I turn off my characters, you don't see any of that. Everything is correct. 
But if I want this to also be under, say, vegetables, pumpkin, I would highlight this again. And again, we'll go to references, mark entry, and I'm going to do the same process as before. And again, mark entry. Now, if I move this to the side, you can see two different um, entries. And that's the first one, vegetable. So you don't want any spaces. And this is formatted exactly as it should be. You don't have to close this mark entry box every time. You can just leave it open and I will go to the next recipe. Once you highlight the title in the next one, you'll click sub entry and it's gonna grab in that title again. Now, if you leave this box open and you want to mark this recipe for another entry in your index, you will always have to click in the sub entry and then up in the main entry. If you keep clicking up here before clicking sub entry, it's not going to let you change this text. I'm going to keep working on these few recipes just to get something to show you with the index and we'll chat in a minute. Now I'm done. So I'm going to close this. Now say I decide, oh, you know what, I don't want to call these telephone cookies anymore. Word does not seem to care if I change the title of the recipe, either what we would normally see, just changing this here, it won't care, or what we change in the field entry data. So you can change that as long as you've put it in correctly. Now if I Say for instance, I wanna also put this under butter. I recommend you do not go through and copy this little bracketed information and paste it in and change this data here. Word does not like it. It's gonna create just duplicate weird information in your index. So you can change titles, but you can't go ahead and copy and paste all new information. So now I'm going down to the bottom and I'm gonna create a page break. So we're going to do a next page section break. Now I'm going to go to references again and we'll say insert index. You can look at all these different styles and figure out which one you like. Personally, I think it's better to have the right align numbers. I want everything to be more cohesive with the actual design of my cookbook. If you want to do that as well, click modify. And I have four levels down. So index one, this is gonna be my major category. So we'll click to modify this. And you'll just go through each index, one through however many levels you have, and go to modify. Once you've done all four of your levels, you'll go back and click OK. And you want to say write a line and we'll say OK. And this is the index that was created. So you can adjust this just like when you created your table of contents. If you need to, you've made any edits or any additional marking of recipe titles, you'll right click and click update. This is obviously an error. So what you want to do is turn on your characters again and we can go up to that entry and we're gonna correct this. I'll show you how to do that real quick. So here's an instance where I can just delete this. If 
before we go today, I want to show you a couple more things that you can do with formatting your index. If you've watched my previous videos, you know that I really like styles, especially when you're working on a cookbook template. Styles are a lifesaver. You can actually use styles for your index as well. What you'll want to do is go to home and then click the styles pane. Whenever you click in your index, it's going to turn the text gray. And that's just because it's pulling information from elsewhere in the document. It lets, Word lets you know that that's generated text. But if you actually select one of the index entries, for instance, I'm doing index one. If I look over here in the current style, it has index one. Now I don't want to create a new style here, but if I wanted to edit index one, entry, what I can do is click the little down triangle and then say modify style. And I'm just going to pick something really random just to show you how to, how to edit this. But I just clicked a different font and I'm going to say, okay. And it's turned all of my index one text to a different font. So let me undo that. You can do this for any one of your index levels. There's a lot of options down here that have to deal with the font, the paragraph tabs. There's so much you can do. I'm not even gonna to try to scratch the surface with it, but I just wanted to show you that, that you have a ton of control over how this looks. Now, another way you can edit this index is, say I don't want to have fruit down here. Um, it, maybe I just wanna be in control of where that breaks. So you'll put your cursor in front of fruit, and then I'm gonna insert a break but this is gonna be a column break. And I'm just gonna tell it, I want it to manually shift up to the top. You have that kind of control over this. Of course, I wouldn't recommend you do a lot of this until you have marked all of your entries for the index and you're about ready to print, just because you may want these breaks elsewhere. The last thing I wanna show you is that you can just remove your index as well. You would just wanna select all the text and go ahead and delete. If you want to reinsert your index, you would simply go to the references tab, insert index, and you can do the editing here as well. You'll see that taking it from the template is going to take it from my styles. You can modify it here or you can modify it in the styles. One thing you cannot do in styles though is you cannot write align page numbers and cause this leader text as easily. So if you're going to change those options, you need to do it in this window. Or at least I should say that is the easiest way that I have found to do it. After you've taken an index out, if you go ahead and insert the index again, it is going to ask you if you want to replace the index. So you'll just want to say yes, and any edits you had made will be incorporated into that. That is it for this video. I hope it was helpful for you guys. And again, your index can be as complicated or as simple as you desire it to be. Definitely use a category master list, something to keep you on track. One thing I found was really helpful was I took screenshots of what my index looked like and I could go back and correct any recipe indexing that needed to be done and just continually refreshed my index going through right clicking, updating the field, just so I could see real time what was happening and get rid of any bugs that had gone on with sloppy editing on my part or editing the entry fields in the actual Word document versus the pop-up box. So hope that's helpful and not confusing to you guys and hopefully you're inspired to create an index and a tool that will really help you as you look for recipes and catalog your family's memories. Thank you guys.